Amen. Thank you. John, John chapter 8, John chapter 8. Gospel of John chapter number 8. John chapter 8, verse number 1 says, Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him. And he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery, and when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Jesus was teaching in the temple as often he did. And the scribes and the Pharisees always looking for a way to get him. Always looking for something that they could trap him, trick him. They brought, probably they had set this whole thing up. They brought a woman and they said she was taken in adultery, caught in the very act. My question to that is, where's the man? Where's the other? But they didn't care about that. They were doing this to trick Jesus. No matter what you do, though, you can't trick God. You can't deceive God. You can't sneak one past God. Jesus was God. And they thought that they had him. They could pin him in his words. And this wasn't the first. This isn't the last but if we get Jesus to say that, um, that she should be stoned, then that goes against the Roman rule. They were under the, the Romans at this time. And so they had something against him. But if he says the opposite, then he's going against the law of, of Moses. He's in there teaching in the temple. And so whichever way he goes, we've got him. Except he didn't go either of those two ways, did he? He chose to go a different way. And so he heard what they said, and they, used, they brought up Moses. Moses in the law said that, that she should be stoned, but what sayest thou? And they were tempting him, but Jesus stooped down, and with his finger he wrote in the ground. And I don't think that it took him uh, just a second to write. I think he was writing for some time until... The silence became awkward. And the Bible says, as if he heard them not. But I think, and I don't know, it doesn't say what he wrote, but there was another time that God with his fingers wrote something. And I think that he, he stooped down and he started writing, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not have any graven images Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor thy father and thy mother. 
And they kept asking and they kept asking and so he, he stood back up and he said, well, let him that is without sin cast the first stone at her. And then he stooped down again and I think he finished. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not, I lost my place. Steal, did I not say steal? Thou shalt not steal. He wrote, I think he wrote the Ten Commandments. And when they looked at the Ten Commandments that he had written and they heard the words that he said, each one, each one, one by one, walked out from the oldest to the youngest see the law said the law of Moses in uh, Exodus Leviticus in Leviticus chapter number 18 it said it it told them what adultery was and it went through a list of sins uh, pertaining to that and in uh, Leviticus chapter number 20 it said that the penalty for that sin was death and they were looking for that answer so that they could accuse Jesus. But Jesus, knowing the law and what he came for, and he, he spoke to the woman afterwards, he said, he said, where's your accusers? Neither do I condemn thee. Remember what he had said, that we're in John chapter eight. Remember what he said in John chapter three, verse number 17, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved he didn't come to condemn her and they would in the old testament when sins were committed they would take those stones and they would throw those stones starting with the oldest coming down to the youngest and the oldest that was there he heard the words of jesus he was processing and he was thinking through, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, and he had. Not only was adultery, the penalty for that was stoning, there were, they had strict penalties back then. A lot, a lot different than what we live with today. Bear false witness, you would get the penalty of whatever, whomever you were lying about, whatever was the penalty for them, that's what they would infer on, on that person. And Jesus said, Who, whoever hasn't sinned, cast the first stone. He knew that this, Romans chapter number three, Paul writes and talks about, about sins and about justification and about propitiation. Jesus took our place. They would go year by year, according to the law in, in Leviticus and Exodus, they would go year by year and it was very, it's very detailed and laid out. And the priest would have to cleanse himself and he would go in and he would kill a lamb or a goat or a bull and he would take that blood and he would go into the Holy of Holies where man met with God and he would present a sacrifice of that blood, put it upon the mercy seat, which was on the top of the Ark of the Covenant. And if God accepted that sacrifice, then their sins were atoned, but they would have to come back the next year. That sin was paid for until next year. They would have to atone those sins again. It was only covered up and pushed back but Jesus was taking the place of that. Jesus would be the final sacrifice, and the propitiation means that he was appeasing God for all of sins. All we have to do is, is trust in his blood, and he presents that blood to God, allowing man to come to God 
again, but not just in a yearly capacity, forever. All of the past sins, all of the present sins, and all of the future sins are now wiped away. They're, not, they're no longer atoned, and we're justified. And Jesus was offering this to that woman because, as Paul was talking about in that chapter, John cha- uh, Romans chapter 3, we're, the verse that's so familiar to us is, uh, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But he's dealing with the law with those people, teaching them about the law. And then he says that God, that Jesus came and he established the law. We're not justified by the law. We're justified by faith in Jesus' blood. So therefore, I accept what Jesus did to pay for my sins and then I can stand before God and when God sees me he sees the blood of Jesus Christ and it's it's like I have never sinned it's all gone it's all wiped away but Jesus didn't say well she was caught in sin so that's okay we we can you can do whatever you want because I came to die for sins he said no go and sin no more he didn't do away with the law he just became the completion of the law so the law is for this God's law the Ten Commandments God's law is there so that we can see that we need a Savior I see that and I see I I cannot live up to these standards I need a Savior that's Jesus Christ. The law was to point people to Christ to allow them to come before God. There is no other way because we cannot keep the law. So Paul said you, there's no justification by the law because you can't keep the law except one. That was Jesus Christ. Jesus kept the law and then he died. He paid the price for our sins so we can be justified but we have to accept that sacrifice we have to believe in him so he's teaching trying to teach all of these people this and we like to believe I like to believe that everybody you know every time you talk to somebody about Jesus they're going to accept that right the fact is Jesus Christ himself came face to face face to face with a lot of people that rejected him to his face he offered them love they came in hate he he always offered them love he never did anything except help and love people and he said I came to save he came to die for their sins and even when he was dying he said father forgive them for they know not what they do but a lot of people rejected him there was the rich young ruler that came he went away sorrowful there are others that stood before him Judas Iscariot heard him preach who knows how many times Jesus hanging between two thieves the one thief one thief said I believe this man is who he says he is and the other one accused him railed on him mocked him so there was people that came face to face with Jesus so we should not be discouraged when we talk to people in a in a loving manner and they still reject him but what we do need to do is put down the rocks drop the rocks because we're guilty of sin ourselves now we're not saying that it's okay to sin because God is clear that he said go and sin no more he has drawn out the line for sin but we know that all have sinned and that includes us so I'm a sinner and you're a sinner and we shouldn't continue throwing rocks at others and we don't pick up we don't pick up actual stones today because we're too we're too civilized right but with our words 
and with some of our deeds, even at people that we care about, we throw stones at them and we hurt them. Sometimes we injure them or injure the relationship to a point that it can't be reconciled. Rocks of disappointment. Sometimes they're rocks of hate. We're probably all guilty of some of these. Of anger. Throwing stones in anger. Words of anger. Humiliation. We criticize. We're always critical. And we don't have to. I know that you all, everybody has somebody that is that's guilty they're caught in things they're wrong and we'd like to just teach them a lesson I'd like to show you where you're wrong but the fact is we're all wrong and throwing those stones is it going to make things better for them or is it going to make things worse between us Sometimes we can't, we can't get it back together once we let that go. There's a line that's been crossed. And so Jesus says, there's a better way. I didn't come to condemn. I came to forgive. You got to accept the forgiveness. If you haven't accepted his forgiveness, then you're still, you're still due the judgment that was to come. There's still a penalty for sin. The penalty for sin never has never gone away. It's just that Jesus took the penalty. I mean, we could say that that if they would have basically they stoned they stoned Jesus Christ, nailing him to the cross. He shed his blood. He died in that woman's place, right? He died in my place. I'm guilty of of death because Romans 6 23 says for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord so we're all guilty of breaking the law and we there I understand there's variations of sin to us but all of them to God say that we deserve hell you deserve to go to hell I deserve to go to hell only one could keep the law and that was Jesus and if we put our trust in him we can stand before God as if we have never committed anything wrong that's the justification that he's talking about he offered it to that lady I believe I believe that she accepted it because he said I, neither do I condemn thee now go and sin no more I don't know where the I don't know where the man was in this situation. I don't know if any of the others that were standing around that had decided they were going to stone this woman. I don't know if any of them later came to realize that they needed him as a savior. But he offered it to them. Whosoever is thirsty let him come to me and I'll give him to drink. He offered that many times to them. He offered salvation. So not only do we have a choice to make, whether we choose heaven or we choose hell, we also have to understand that by throwing stones at other sinners, we're hypocrites. And we've all probably all of us are guilty of being hypocrites at some point so just to remind you we've all broken God's law and you don't a lot of people I don't agree with a lot of people I'd like to throw stones at but that's not going to work for bringing them to Christ that's not going to do any good for their situation so although I don't agree with it, I could still love them because he loves them. I could still care about their soul because he cares about their soul. And you might get another chance to speak with them, but at least you won't be guilty 
of the condemnation of throwing those rocks when it's no longer our place to do that. No longer with the words that we say to do those things. So just because in God's eyes I'm justified doesn't mean that I'm God. Just because he, he, he placed the blood on the mercy seat to pay for my sins for forever doesn't mean that I am good enough to knock other people's with with the rocks so tonight we're we don't usually have an invitation on Wednesday nights but we're going to tonight brother Robert if you want to do a 202 in that maroon book and if you never accepted Jesus as your savior then tonight's an opportunity for you do, to do that and if you have a, a reason to come to pray for somebody else there are other ways we can bring somebody to Christ without the accusations of trying to knock them down but hey, I want to pray for this person because they're wrong basically caught in spiritual adultery I want to pray for that person I'm going to bring them to Christ a different way maybe you need to pray for something else if you do after we pray then you come lord we thank you so much for this evening thank you for your word that you've given us thank you for your forgiveness for uh, loving us and thank you for allowing us to serve you and lord i pray that you would help us to not uh, to not be guilty of uh, condemning others uh, while we have sin in our own hearts but i pray that you would help us to uh, to lay the stones down lord if there's somebody here that doesn't know you as their savior tonight that they would come that they would uh, ask questions and we could show them from your word how to be saved we pray this in jesus name 